Thank you, thank you, uh, Dominique, and thank you all for having me here. I'd like to start off with a show of hands, everyone who's working right now. Part-time, full-time, you run a business, that all counts. And don't worry, no audience volunteers or anything. Now, keep your hands up and be honest with this one. If you would call yourself engaged and inspired at work. And you know, this being a TEDx crowd, I suspect you'd be a little bit above average, which looks like you are. But the truth of the matter is, we live in a world where only 30% of us are inspired by the work we do. I think that has some pretty grave consequences. <coughs> Imagine instead a world where the majority of us were inspired by our work. I think we could solve some problems if we worked on stuff we really cared about. Imagine the impact that would have on our productivity, our economy. Imagine the impact that would have on our happiness. The surprising thing is, it's not that far-fetched. There's a shift that's going on right now in the millennial generation, my generation, is leading the charge. We may live in a world where only 30% of us are inspired at work, but we also live in a world where we have an unprecedented opportunity to create our own work, which is exactly what millennials are doing. We're channeling our energy into entrepreneurial pursuits faster than ever before, and that translates into a new era of innovation, job growth, and prosperity. How is that possible? Aren't we the generation that's supposed to be drowning in student and consumer debt and battling 15% unemployment? Exactly, that's us. And we're taking matters into our own hands. The Department of Labor projects a 600% increase in entrepreneurship by 2025, 600%. In the meantime, we're still trying to shake the label of the entitled generation. Which in fairness, there may be some truth to the entitled narcissistic stereotypes, because after all, we are the generation that invented, <laughs> that invented the word selfie. Let me see if I get the TED letters in there. But there's a disconnect I'm here to dispel between, oh, here's the selfie, between the entitled myth and the entrepreneurial reality. As a generation, we realize we can't rely on the government or some corporation to be there for us. And more importantly, we're doing something about it in record numbers. Instead of self-entitlement, we're seeing a return to self-reliance. If the last 100 years were characterized by mass employment, the next 100 would be characterized by mass entrepreneurship. Ask anyone my age if they expect to receive a dime of Social Security benefits when they retire. You're not going to find a single rational person to say, yes, nobody. We're paying into the system fully expecting <laughs> nothing in return. Does that sound entitled? A quarter of millennials say the best way, the best way to get ahead financially is to break out on my own and start a business. Does that sound entitled? And a third of millennials have already started one or more businesses. That's triple the rate of the rest of the population. Does that sound like the behavior of an entitled generation to you? No. We're a generation <laughs> hell-bent on creating a future on our own terms. It's time for a new set of labels. Proactive, committed, the entrepreneurial generation. The result of this shift, this entrepreneurial shift, is a generation of workers more connected to the work they do, who feel like they're making a more positive contribution in the world. And that brings us to the three ingredients for a happy human existence. I call them the three C's, and they're different from Annie's three C's. <laughs> Creation, connection, and contribution. Think about this, if you're working on something you care about that helps other people, and you've got healthy relationships, you're a happy camper. And I'm excited because the three C's are contagious, and they're already spreading. You may have heard uh, Sir Ken Robinson in one of the most, maybe the most popular TED Talk of all time, define creativity as the process of having original ideas that have value. And those two components, ideas and value, are the building blocks of innovation. But here's where Sir Ken gets it wrong. He makes the argument that schools are killing creativity, but gives it too narrow a definition, talking only about art and music and dance. When it's so much more than that, it's an innate potential that we all share. It's in our genes, mine, yours, everyone's. I like to think of cre creativity as a ripped six-pack stomach <laughs> that we all have, or at least we all have the potential for it. It's in there, the muscles are in there, it's biology. They just 
might not be visible yet. <laughs> the tools, it's okay, I'm still working on mine too. The, the tools at our disposal, the technology, the connectivity, they're fueling innovation at an accelerating pace. Creativity isn't dying, it's thriving. And for millennials, it's thriving out of necessity. At once, it's our reactive response to a world with no guarantees, and our proactive drive to build a better future. We're asking the question, and I encourage you to ask this too, what can I create that has value for myself, for others, for the world? What product can I sell? What service can I offer? What pain can I ease? What solution can I provide? The ability to answer these questions now more than ever is a 21st century survival skill. So how do we exercise our creative muscles and work together to build a more prosperous future for everyone? It's simple, we put the three C's into practice in our daily lives. This is my wife, Bryn, and, and our friend, Brooke. They love to take pictures of our friends, kids, and pets, and family pictures for Christmas cards, and they would geek out on their camera settings for hours. It was their creative process. Then one day, they went from hobbyist photographers to professional photographers. And you know what it took to go pro? An ad on Craigslist, <laughs> a connection. <laughs> This year they shot more than a dozen weddings, made a healthy profit, to help these young families capture and share their big day contribution. This is Pat. Pat's an architect who a few years ago was studying for the LEED exam, a certification to design energy efficient buildings like the one we're in. Now during this process, Pat decided to put his study notes online so he'd have a central repository accessible from anywhere, his creation. Later, he found out that thousands of other architects had discovered his site were using his notes to help study for it and pass the same test. Connection. You know, lead, lead certified or not, Pat's job did not survive the Great Recession. But because of this resource he created and given away, his contribution, he was able to bundle his test prep materials into a study guide and sell them directly. In his first month, he made more than he ever had at his day job and has gone up and sell more than half a million dollars worth of these things. And today, Pat helps thousands of people share their own unique ideas with the world and create their own online businesses. And then there's, and there's this guy. <laughs> Maybe you've got an idea, and the only way to know for sure if it's going to work is to put it out in the world and see what happens. And that's my story. I learned that people were buying shoes online. I know. And <laughs> so my theory was difficult to find out which online shoe store had the best price. So my theory was, if I could build a footwear-only comparison shopping site, my creation, I could deliver more accurate results than the larger shopping engines and work more closely with the retailers to negotiate better deals. The connection. The site went on to sell you know, $10 million worth of shoes for my retail partners and serve thousands of customers. A contribution. But more importantly than that, the income from this side hustle eventually gave me the freedom and the confidence to walk away from my less than inspiring nine to five job, start new ventures, and try out even more new ideas. It might take several failed experiments before you land on a winner. And I can say because I've had my share, but it's worth it to keep trying, to keep pushing, because these small acts of creativity serve a higher purpose. They're each adding a little bit of value to the world, whole lot of value to the lives of these entrepreneurs. Your sense of independence and self-worth skyrockets the moment you earn that first dollar outside of a traditional job. Now, the pushback I get on this is, by Nick, I'm not creative, I don't have any business ideas, I'm not an entrepreneur, and neither was I. I convinced myself I wasn't creative because Every personality aptitude test I've ever taken has identified me correctly, by the way, as the analytical, process-driven, Excel spreadsheet-loving kind of guy that I am. And I've fallen into the trap of defining creativity as art and music and dance. And I wasn't out there painting original murals or composing symphonies, so I must not be creative. Does that sound familiar? But I've found creative outlets in the most unlikely places. <coughs> and I'm confident you will too. For example, there was a routine report I had to run in Excel. It took four or five minutes every day. So one morning I sat down to try to figure out, there's gotta be a better way. How can I automate this process? 
it took a little bit of time to figure it out, but ultimately turned that five minutes every day into 15 seconds. An original idea that had value, she was gonna say, me and my team, five minutes a day for years, you better have value. And watching these rows and numbers fly by, it is. Orchestrating my own silent little nerd symphony. <laughs> yes, yes, I am creative, and yes, you are too. <laughs> now let's zoom out for a second, because this is where it gets really exciting. Bryn and Brooke and Pat and myself are just four out of 75 million millennials. We make up a quarter of the US population. That's us in blue in the corner. We look, we look good, don't we? <laughs> and remember, one in three of us has already started one or more businesses. I want you to think of the compound effect of 25 million new businesses and the entrepreneurs at their helms. We're staring down the barrel of an unprecedented surge in small business growth, which, as you know, is the biggest driver of our economy. And sure, these are small companies, especially at first. But let's not forget, Apple started in a garage, Facebook started in a dorm room, Google started in a university computer lab, the next big thing almost always starts as a quiet, small thing. With these kind of numbers, with this wave that's already started, I like our odds. We're building a future that's more creative, more self-reliant, and more entrepreneurial than anything that's come before. So to the millennials in the audience, you are entitled. You're entitled to pursue the career path you want to pursue. You're entitled to define your own values, and you're entitled to create something of value. And to everyone else, you are too. <laughs> There's no age restriction on the three C's. In fact, we all have access. We have the exact same creative muscles, the exact same tools at our disposal. We can flip the script so that 70% of us wake up inspired and excited on Monday morning instead of the 30% to do today. And how we're gonna get there is for each of us to harness the three C's and turn this wave into a revolution. This is my challenge to you. What will you create? How will you connect? What will you contribute? What can we collectively accomplish when we individually pursue this creative path? In this room, in this city, in this country, and on this planet. Thank you.